Hello again everyone. So today I'm going to take you through a couple of NPC navigation techniques. I'm also going to show you how to initiate punch in and punch out recording. Also, uh, there's a question left in the comments by Lo Sham, and they ask, what's that little magnifying glass with the 16 pads icon for it on the automation edit page in the grid view for? It seems to zoom in random spots, but I try to figure out exactly how it's really supposed to be. Okay, I understand exactly what you're talking about. And um, fortunately today, we're going over navigation. So as I demonstrate, I'm going to answer that question. All right, let's go take a look. Okay guys, so I'm going to start off with an empty project. I do have a virtual instrument selected uh, for track number one. I'm using a hype synth. I'm using a snappy perk pad. <laughs> I say that three times fast. A plug-in or preset. So it sounds something like this. Okay. All right. So let's go to the grid view. And, um, well, let's get this question out of the way first. Um, let, um, so what does this little magnifying glass do? All right. So let's just say I have a 18 measure sequence here. All right. I'm going to zoom out. And right now I'm looking at all 18 measures. Well, once I tap this little grid magnifying glass icon, what it does is it restricts your it restricts your navigation to two measures at a time, and that's it. It just allows for you to just kind of zoom in on your projects. Now, one thing I will say is that this is probably more effective when you're using a um, a um, a pad bank. So if I zoom in, now I can see all of pad A, right? So then, of course, that's all, all of bank A, then bank B, C, D, hold shift, and so on and so on, right? E, F, G, H, right? But um, what it allows, again, all it allows you to do is to just kind of zoom in on two measures worth of your bank performance. So um, another thing I like to do is, hits, is uh, hit the settings button and then use the uh, auto the follow auto scroll mode. So in other words, what happens is as I move, when I move the playhead, it scrolls along with me, and no matter where I stop, I'm going to see two measures worth of my sequence, and that's pretty much what that does. Again, it's just a quick navigation tool. I'm going to go back here, go back to my plugin, um, or should I say virtual instrument? I'm going to come, I'm going to make this a four measure sequence, and I am going to record a two five one progression. I'm going to use the MIDI capture feature, um, or the retro retrospective recording. Uh, in other words, I'm just going to press play, play my two five one, and then. Um, hit stop, hold shift, and then press record, and then you'll see the notes populate. Um, let's see, I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean here right now. All right, let's see, make sure that the metronome is initiated, go to main, so I hit play, there we are, good. All right, so here we go, one, two, ready, play. Stop, okay, no notes, right? If I hold shift and press record, the retrospective record will capture the most recent MIDI. So as I adjust this, I'll explain why I do that. So um, I don't know if this happens to you guys or not, but whenever I start recording myself, uh, all of a sudden I become less talented. I forget how to play. And <laughs> it just has something, uh, there's just something about pressing the record button that induces anxiety amongst musicians. Uh, I call it the oral, uh, no, 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 the, the, the term is coined red light syndrome. So, you know, just to alleviate the anxiety, I would just much rather let the metronome play out and I play along. And if I just so happen to play something I like, then we capture it. Now, so let's see, the second chord of this progression occurred at, at or around approximately 2-2. Two, two. Uh, let's see, it was measure 2, beat 2, tick number 48 ended nah, I could just say ended at 2 4 all right so what if at some point later I want to do something different in this area 
this, uh, at the, I want you to do something different with the second chord in my progression. I don't know what it is, but I know that I want to do something. Well, what I can do is I can double tap here um, at this navigation. Uh, I can double tap here at the navigation bar uh, where it says two measures, two beats, 24 ticks. If I double click here, it'll take me to the locate window. So let's just say... So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. All right. So this is the spot. So between two, two and two, four. Okay. Two, two and two, four. Well, let's just say hypothetically, this sequence was a whole lot longer than two beats. I'm sorry. Yes. The two measures rather. Well, let's just say it was 64 measures. That's a long sequence. And um, maybe you want to bookmark some part of the sequence that you want to change a little bit later. So that's exactly what this page is for. So if you look down here, you have a, a set of six groups. These are six bookmarking groups to two, right? So all I have to do is just navigate to the part of the sequence that I want to bookmark and then just hit the set button. So I have uh, the beginning set at 2 2. And then, if I want to, double tap again, set 2 4. All right, so let's just put this to the test then, right? So, again, a 64 measure sequence. I'm going to zoom out, scroll all the way over to measure number 29, beat 3. Double tap here. All right, I'm going to measure 29, beat 3, but I want to go back to the part that I want to edit a little bit later. So all I have to do is just tap number 1. And what it does is it automatically puts me back where I want to be. And so, and there's my playhead right there, right where I want to be to uh, make my edits. All right, so let's make this... Uh, for measure sequence again and there we are okay so now let's talk about editing after the fact um, this is where punch in and punch out come into play if I double tap here again um, I have a punch in and punch out uh, navigation divisions right so um, in order for this to work what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap the in button and then I'm going to tap the punch out so I want to I want to punch out at two four. So two four. I want to punch in at two two. All right. Now once I exit, what you'll notice is that there's this little red bar above and between two four and two two. So um, what that means for us is that when I press record and hit play start or hit play start and then hit record at some point during the playback um, I'll be able to record something here uh, without disturbing anything else outside of the parameters of the little red bar the punch in punch out bar so uh, I think I know what I want to do here instead of playing a um, what did I play before I played a uh, an F13 right there. So I think I'm going to swap that out for its tritone substitution of there we are of B13. There we are. All right. So let's see. I'm going to hit play start tap record. Now, what I did there is I just kind of tapped the chord a few times <laughs> because I didn't quite know what I wanted the rhythm to look like. So uh, I think I have a better idea of what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick edit really quickly. Uh -huh. There we are. And uh, I might nudge this around a bit. Mm, quantize, nudge. Okay. And 
And uh, let's see here. Speaking of nudging, now what I can do is I can take this, nudge it all the way back over here. Oh, and another thing, make sure you turn off your punch in, punch out. There we are. Come, uh, there we are. Uh, let's see, now I only need two measures. And that's it, there we are. All right, so now I have my two, five, one progression this time with the tritone substitution. see here the only other thing to cover in this window would be the play start which is essentially the same thing as punch in punch out the only difference is is that um, the record start the record arm starts or the record arm activates after the sequence plays through once so I have two measures the, uh, I'll hit place. I'll hit play start. The two measures will play through, and then afterwards, <clears throat> and upon the second cycle, upon the repeat, the recorder activates, and that's pretty much all that there is to that. Um, yeah, these are a couple of useful navigation tools. So uh, we've covered. Let's make sure we have everything. So we've covered bookmarks. Um, a navigation in general and punch in punch outs and uh, we even threw in the little two measure navigation tip there <laughs> so again that's pretty much what that does it just zooms into it just zooms into those uh, two measures of your performance or two measures of your performance. And that's pretty much it, guys. All right, guys, so that pretty much does it for the navigation tips, the punch in, punch out method, and the explanation behind the magnifying glass uh, grid icon. So um, I'm hoping that you guys found those tips useful. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Otherwise, I'll talk with you guys soon. All right, thanks.